I am joined by Judy Savitskaya and Dan Krupa from Frontier Climate, an organization leading groundbreaking efforts in carbon dioxide removal. They are here to share insights on their exciting global challenge to identify alkalinity generating rocks and how it helps drive impactful solutions for climate change. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Where do you see the most exciting developments happening in climate science, specifically with regards to carbon removal? Yeah, so at Frontier, we're, we're, we're generally uh, interested in a broad range of carbon dioxide removal approaches. So we're really focused on a, a portfolio approach, ranging from biomass carbon removal to direct air capture. But one of the areas we've really been focusing on lately is alkalinity-based CDR approaches. This includes things like uh, ocean alkalinity enhancement or surficial weathering or uh, direct air capture with mineral looping technology. So that's one of the, the key areas that we've really been honing in on alkalinity-based CDR. Wow, that is really cool. I find the, the alkalinity-based climate solutions really, really interesting. A lot of people think about the warming and trying to you know, invest in things that cause cooling, but the, but the ocean acidification problem is, is a big one. So I think that's a really good you know, effort that yeah. you guys are, are doing. And one of the reasons we're really interested in alkalinity bases, we, we, we took a step back and looked for what, what can we reach very large scale, you know, gigaton per year uh, CDR removal, as well as low cost. So those, those two trade-offs. And really, um, the, the natural abundance of alkalinity um, really uh, led us down the path of, of looking at these, these specific approaches that can meet those specific criteria, large scale and low cost. So this past fall, AGU facilitated the ethical framework on climate intervention. So why is centering ethics so important when it comes to research, funding, and policy in climate science? Yeah, there's a, a lot of different pieces of the puzzle here. So there's one that we should address, which is this question of moral hazard. Are we, if we use carbon removal, if we can get it to be very, very cheap and very scalable, does that then give us license to continue emitting? So I have good news and bad news, which is that it's not going to be cheap enough to, uh, to make it not worthwhile to do mitigation. So for sure, mitigation will happen and it should happen first and it will happen first. But there's a lot of sectors where there will be continued unabated emissions and we might actually want to reverse some of the existing impacts of climate change and carbon removal is a solution to, to get us there. Um, another aspect to consider is that some of the cheapest solutions that we're aware of, so that includes um, enhanced rock weathering in soils and agriculture, anything touching the ocean, um, a couple of other uh, various types of pathways, they're in an open system, which means they're going to interact with the environment in some way. And that's part of what enables it to be cheaper. You're utilizing some existing system rather than you know building a box and needing to engineer everything inside of it. So if you're going to have some interaction with open systems, you need to be ultra careful about knowing exactly what the impacts might be, uh, monitoring and measuring and maintaining a, an understanding of what impacts you're having with the system. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of these impacts and potential uncertainty, how do you balance the promise of solutions with the unknown? Yeah, I think what we at Frontier try to do is acknowledge that there are a lot of open questions talk with the right experts who are working on those and help enable them in whatever way we can through uh, whatever tools that we have available to us to pursue those scientific questions in a way that's geared toward deployment with the sense with the with the idea being um, let's decide what the heuristics are for when deployment is a go or a no go or like how we're going to do measurement let's actually write down rules on a piece of paper and over time the science will evolve and we're definitely going to be wrong in a lot of cases but to move forward at all we need to start writing rules so that we can learn what is right and wrong and, and move forward yeah. I, would, I would say frontier is, is very much focused on a bit of the deployment aspect. So look, compiling all the science and research that bubbles up into these promising appro CDR approaches and, and startups, but we're really looking to catalyze the, the deployment. And we, we think a lot of additional learning uh, and research can be, can be done during those deployments to, to further accelerate the field. Yeah, absolutely. And at the scale we're at now, these deployments are, even, even the biggest deployments are small on a climate scale. So mm -hmm. we're still learning more than we are you know, doing a business in the world. Right. It's more about the research. Yeah. yeah. 
And speaking of moving forward, AGU24's theme for this year is what's next for science. So what's your next for science and what at this meeting are you looking forward to? One of the big things that we're really excited for at, at AGU is to um, promote our alkalinity challenge in which we're, we're, we've acknowledged that if we can find low cost, readily available alkalinity sources around the globe, uh, there's this chance for a high capacity, low cost CDR to happen at a meaningful scale. But that begs the question, where is all the alkalinity? And so there's only so much we know from, from the literature or from existing public resources. So we're, we're crowdsourcing it. We're asking for uh, the, the geophysical community to, to, to help us understand where all of these, uh, these potential alkalinity sources are uh, that could really advance CDR. Yeah, where are the rocks? <laughs> Part of it is that our goal as an organization is to, the, the goal of the organization is to put CR on its best trajectory by 2030. That's the like mission that we talk about every year when we do our planning. And one of the big pieces of that is figuring out what pathways are gonna work and what pathways are not gonna work. And in the alkalinity world, the biggest question for us is, is does this pathway have enough capacity? Is there enough of this rock in the world at high enough grade in accessible places that we could actually, uh, that alkalinity could be a really meaningful part of the CDR solution as a whole. So we want to be able to compare that to uh, direct air capture, for example, where energy is the big resource constraint or uh, biomass based sources where the biomass is the big constraint. And so trying to figure out like what does the 2050 puzzle for CDR look like and how can we start making investments now to um, to deploy correctly across these different pathways. Absolutely. Well, I wish Frontier Climate the best of luck with its endeavors. This is a very, very important you know, move forward for our field and for combating climate change. So thank you for the work that you do and thank you for sharing this insight. Thank you.